Today I'll be teaching you about the computer concept of memory. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be familiar with the function and usages of the hard drive, the RAM, the cache, and the register. To make this computer concept business easier to understand, we're going to put it into a real life situation. Meet Jimmy. He's going to bake a cake. Now in this kitchen of his, Jimmy has four places he can store his ingredients and tools. First, everything he needs in the kitchen is stored in the cupboards. Things he's going to use for the job on hand can be put on the bench. Things he's going to use often are placed on the counter. And things he's going to use constantly are held in his hands. However, his hands, though convenient, are capable of holding very little things, and thus tools and ingredients must be distributed amongst the cupboards, bench, and counter. Jimmy is starting now. Everything he needs is currently in the cupboards, so he checks his list and fetches everything he needs, placing it on the bench. Now he gets the 12 eggs, puts them onto the counter, and cracks them into the bowl one by one, separating the yolk from the white. Notice how he takes all 12 eggs at once and puts them on the counter first. Then he adds sugar, keeping the sugar on the table as he anticipates he'll most likely need it again later. He gets an electronic mixer and holding it in his hands, stirs the mixture until it's light and fluffy. Even when he's examining the mixture, he keeps the electronic stir in his hands so he can keep using it when he's done examining. He takes the sift flour and baking powder and places them on the counter. Then he sifts the flour and baking powder into the mixture. He folds the melted blusher in carefully and bakes it for 40 minutes in the pan. Well, you're probably wondering right now, how is this related to computer memory? Well, I'll tell you. This cake baking process is quite like what happens inside a computer itself. Jimmy is like a CPU. He does everything. He does all the processes. Then, this storage cupboard right here is like the hard drive. It is very big. It can store a lot of things. However, it is quite far from Jimmy's. And thus, you'll have to go a long way to access it. This this, uh, this bench is like the RAM. It has relatively high storage space. However, it is still quite far from Jimmy, and he cannot access everything he needs at quick enough speed. This counter right here is like a CPU cache. We can't store many things on this counter. However, it is right next to the CPU, or right next to Jimmy. And thus, everything he needs, everything that he puts on it, is within arm's reach, and he can access that really quickly. There's also one last place for storage, his hands. He can use anything that he uses a lot to hold in his hands. That, and that's like the register in the CPU. It's right there. It has really low storage capacity like his hands. Can't hold many things. However, it is instantly accessible. And thus, that is what makes a computer really quick. And thus, this is how different types of computer memory we have today work together collaboratively to produce a machine that is not only fast, but has high storage capacity.